hit in the face and you don't, and you don't expect it. But you know, coaches come back, uh, you know, very energetic and be able to have this type of mindset that you know we got these two games and everything. You treat it like it's your last, you know. Especially for our seniors, this is our last senior home game too. So you know, think about them and what they've been through. So you know, we gotta go out there and execute. And the guys are putting emphasis on that. Like you gotta play hard and know your personnel and know who you're going against each and everything inside and out. So yeah. Thank yeah, you. No problem. When, when it comes to this defense forcing turnovers, it's, up, it's kind of a streak thing, but are you seeing when you guys are watching film, guys kind of doing the things that help put you in position to get a turnover, if you know what I mean, in terms of punching that ball. Oh yeah, no, well, sort of most of the things with turnovers say it's about the effort, you know, so who's going to come over there and like stand the person up and then punch the ball? Or who's going to be able to uh, snatch a play or be aggressive and try and catch the ball in the air? You know, it also depends on the effort and attitude that we got with it. You know, each and every day we do our turnover circuit to uh, emphasize what we're going to do during the game and everything. So who's going to really do that during practice and going to translate into the game? Yeah, so I feel like we even put a position into trying and learn techniques on how to get the turnovers and everything. We got to be able to put it on the field and put it on paper. Okay, some of you may ask about this already, but after the game, a couple of guys said that there might not be guys bought in. Like, how do you respond to that as a veteran guy that's been around this program for a while? Oh, yeah, no, it's really annoying, you know, especially, you know, the seniors and all the older guys who put all this hard work and everything. You see guys who are slacking off or not being fully bought in, like Hunter said or all the players have said. You know, it's really frustrating, especially when people work so hard during spring ball, summer camp, and all the changes that are going on around here, too. And, just, you know, people are saying they're going to do this and do that, but if not actually doing it, you're like, you know, that's like a, like a shot in the back. You know, you put your blessed with interiors in this program and everything. You've seen that everybody not bought in. So, like, it's like, can I really trust you? Am I going to feel it and everything? So, you know, it, it, it hurts seeing that, you know, guys are, some guys are doing, like, you know, they're having that meh feeling. And, like, you know, I'm getting frustrated because, you know, I got seniors and older guys that put in blood, sweat, and tears, and, like, they get let down by guys who are not really prepared enough or not focused enough. How do you deal with that week of preparation or meeting or how do you go about it? You, know, you just got to practice hard, lead by example, man. You know, sometimes that type of energy is contagious. So, you know, if you're a leader, that, that leadership, like, you know, all the other guys right there, that's contagious. So, like, if you're going to be negative, that can be contagious as well, too. So, you have to have a positive mindset and be able to keep that uh, momentum going and everything and show them that, like, hey, pick it up. You know what I'm saying? You got faith to play. You know, you mess up on the play, but pick it up and do it again. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that, it's that mentality of being positive. That's what you got to keep doing. Have you been yeah. happy with the response that you've seen from your teammates? Oh, yeah. Well, I, know. I mean, like, I feel like that, you know, this is a rough situ situation that we're in right now, but I feel like that there's not a lot of people currently that's soaking around. We know what we got to do. We got a job to do. We got to, <laughs> play Nebraska and try to win this Saturday night. So I feel like everybody is on 10 right now trying to be sure to be prepared the right way. James, sorry if, if you were asked this, I came a little late. Um, I don't know if you heard some of the comments your teammates made on Saturday or got, got back to you that they didn't feel like everyone was on the same page. Is it something you felt like you noticed at, at any points this season? Uh, I feel like that it's like it comes in like small packages, you know, and that's what things too, like it's the little things that happen, the little things turn into big things and it just all just start falling apart now, you know. You see it week by week and it's like, oh, you know, you know, it happens, you know, you just clean it up during Friday night off, right, walk through and then come pick up on Saturday and everything, but, you know, I feel like that, you know, small things turn into big things and it grows and grows and grows and grows and they're going to explode. And I feel like that, you know, this Saturday, last Saturday, that's what happened. And I feel like some things may be said across the team and everything because, you know, we all have a goal and a mindset to win. And, you know, everybody needs to be on the same page for us to do that. Because we can't just do it with just one side of the ball or two sides of the ball. We have everybody else doing it. So. When you say a little thing, without obviously you wouldn't name names, but what's an example of, like, a little thing that you were kind of thinking about as you answered that question? Well, let's say, uh, you know, you also have a motion turn right and everything, but slant right, but you went left. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, oh, you know, I missed the call. That's like a little thing. But then, like, you know, that can also translate to feel or footwork. You know what I'm saying? Footwork can be so minuscule and everything. Like, people on TV don't see it, but like, you stay underneath yourself, then you get reached by a tackle or a guard and everything. You know, it's a small thing, but in the bigger picture and things, that's how they get you beat. Cause now you open the gap on the backside and everything and it cut up. So, you know, that's the little things right there. Also, it's just be able to, like, be aware of like what's the, what you do in that play. Like sometimes you need to be able to process things a lot faster than what you need to. Like sometimes people can know the call, but not process it fast enough that the person already already got to hand the ball and step the ball and the play already happened while you just sitting there just looking clueless. That's that's like little things. Be able to be on your team, piece of pieces. One of the things that Coach Rickle said on Monday was that one of his goals was to make sure that the communication was open for you guys. And you let some things out early in the week so you can move forward. Do you think that happened well enough that you guys are kind of able to turn the page? Oh, yeah, well, I doubt. I mean, like, you know, this 
Gale has. It's like earlier, man. You know, it's tough for the seniors, man. You know, we, we don't want to go out like this for our seniors. And, you know, they worked so hard for this program and everything. So good and the bad and just you know, seeing this stuff happen. So, you know, we got to let some stuff out, too. You know, you can't handle animosity to your teammates. You know, these are your brothers, too. And they, you know, they, play, they put in a situation the same way as you are. So, yeah, be able to come out and play and get your things out, too. You know, we're brothers. You know what I'm saying? Love and love, but like, tough love, too, though. You know? Yeah. Team meeting, was anything said, or what was the message? And you know, did other players talk to you on that? Oh yeah, no, it's just prepare, 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 prepare. Like know your offense, know the defense, <laughs> inside and out. Like know your personnel, who know you going against. Like know what you gotta do, and watch the film and be able to know what you gotta do in that assignment. And then, then some, you know, the D line, close Chris always said, do your job and then some. So it means that sometimes you gotta make plays, and that's what we make it, and that's what we do. In, in this stage, there's a lot of going to be new team every year, more transfers than ever. Does that make it harder for guys? I'm not saying it's specifically a transfer issue, but just that it's, it's such a new team every year. Does it make it harder for guys to be on the same page when you go into a season when there are so many new people each year? I wouldn't say make it harder. I mean, some people players have different cultures and everything, which is, you know, be good or bad, you know, but, you know, it's all just depends on, like, the, the, the culture that the team already still to. Like, everybody in the team is already bought in and everything. It kind of comes in. The guy can be naturally bought in as well, too. As this year, you know, we have like a couple transfers coming in, and we had this mindset, you know, what we got to do, and the guys come in and follow it correctly. So I don't think it'd be tough if the stretch were coming or not. Speaking about the film, first half, second half, did you guys do anything different schematically, or what do you think was the main difference in the second half when you were rewatching the film? I think that people started, like, you know, just like, it's hard to describe it, really. I think um, you started locking in. Yeah, you start. I guess you can say locking in. I guess, yeah. Like you see, like you know, second half is completely different from what they have in the first half. You know, but you know what happened in the first half? Like I said earlier, in a few things like there's a lot of minute errors. You know, it's like a lot beating ourselves up more. So like the scheme is doing us dirty. You know, like I feel like a lot of guys, like you said, locking in, you know, do their job right, and then some, and then you know, just playing physical and playing what we need to do. Uh, and that's the problem. We gotta start that in the first half, and then some. You know, a lot of our games and everything was slow start, but we start in the second half. And that's what happens when you get beat by a good team and everything too. Because you know, we gotta have that same amount of intensity throughout the whole entire game, not just half the game. Do you think everybody on the team is bought into what Coach Pick and the staff are, are trying to do here? I can't speak for everybody. I can speak for myself, though. I'm, I'm, I'm bought in. I bought it without a doubt, man. I see the love and the intensity that you guys bring in every single day. The amount of time they put in the uh, floor up top right there doing film study, trying to get like, tips and uh, snapshots and everything. And, you know, these guys work hard for us and everything. And so, you know, why can't we work hard for them? Dude, when you're going into a game like this where you don't know what your three quarterbacks is going to play, like, yeah. how difficult is that to prepare for? Is just add more time you got to know all three? Oh, yeah, no, well, I mean, you got to prepare for everybody. You know, you, you know, some people got strange, uh, strange from weaknesses, you know. You know, this team got to do, like, three different quarterbacks, like you said, so you know, it, it's going to be a little bit strange, like, prepare for any other team, you know. But uh, at the same time, like, with Dillow and Nebraska, we know that they try to win the ball. Obviously, we the big team of rushing and yards per carry and everything, so. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not worried about the quarterbacks, but I'm trying to stop the run. I want to stop the run, you know, especially trying to come to our house and defend what we got to do and everything, especially what happened last week, you know, we got to stop the run, stop the run. What, what do they do specifically with that run game that has made them so potent in that regard? They, it's, they do a lot of inside zone, crunch, Bible, you know, stuff like, it's not nothing like something crazy that like different teams do, like they got a little option there and there when they personnel like 12. 21 to 12 personnel and stuff like that, but I mean, you know, they just they just they know what they can do well and they do it well and do it right. That's what they do. Yeah. James, talking about you know that getting locked in factor, what do you think has been? Do you think that's been the issue? Or what's kind of been the specific reason why you guys have kind of struggled sometimes in the first half before really getting in, into it in the second half of games? I um, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I would say that. Um, one of the key things is preparation. You know, be able to have confidence and be able to play fast and play physical and do your job correctly. You know, I think one of the big things to do is some people get like, some people might get like jitters and everything, see what happens, and they probably see something that new that they haven't seen on film, or and then they start going all the sunders. But um, I would say that you know, just be able to prepare right, so you be confident and fast and everything. I'm not saying that people work, but I'm just saying that's probably one way to you know, get that kind of. So it's a fluffy question, but Thanksgiving's next week. What you thankful for? I'm thankful for this team. Thankful for my family. You know, this team gave me the opportunity to play football for the great university and everything. And you know, I wanted a big recruit for real. So you know, this team gave me a shot to be able to play football. And now here I am now. So I'm thankful for this team. I'm thankful for everybody who gave me the support to be here. Favorite thing uh, Thanksgiving food? <sighs> Favorite. 
mac and cheese, if they count that. If not, then I'm going with honey glazed ham. I'm a ham guy. Not guy. I'm a ham guy. <laughs> if there's some, yeah, no problem. One last. If there's something you could learn from this entire season, what do you think that that kind of like that kind of takeaway is that you can kind of take forward for next year? One thing that I learned from this season we take next year is that like you know you gotta be able to play fast and physical, man. You know, like if you know what you're doing or you know what you're gonna get, man, the game will come easy to you, man. You gotta be able to trust the preparation and trust the process. I feel like that on most teams and everything, that some people's like, oh, is this and that, or it could be this, could be that. Like at the end of the day with football, you know, it could just be X's and O's, but like you know, you gotta be able to play fast, play play physical, do your job and do it fast and do it right. When you do that, then good things will happen to you. You start second guessing yourself. That's what all the, you know, oh, this happened, this happened, you know, all natives. So.